This video is an excerpt from a much longer France travel talk by Steve Smith. To view other topics or to watch Steve's France talk in its entirety, visit ricksteves.com or check out my Rick Steves YouTube channel. Enjoy. Provence and the French Riviera. Um, anchor the southwestern corner of your trip. Here, make a grand finale in the southwestern corner. Provence provides a splendid recipe of arid climate, seas of vineyards, fields of lavender, sunflowers, so good and great, great cities and villages that we had to write a book just dedicated to this one region. The size of the state of Massachusetts is this little region of Provence and the French Riviera. It features great cities like Arles, a principal Roman city on the Via Domitia that connected Italy with um, Spain. Here in Arles, 50,000 people, you can explore its Roman history, which is, its heritage is shown beautifully. It's also a, a inexpensive place to stay with great hotels and restaurants in remarkable price ranges. The ancient uh, antique museum of Arles presents its Roman history. Look at how little the city looks to have changed. Let's look backwards. Here it is today. This is what it looked like in a model in this museum that I'm showing you 2,000 years ago. Geez, I wish every city had a museum like this that presented what the city looked like in its heyday, you see. And then from the model of the city of Arles, there's the arena, there's the theater, the Roman theater, there's the forum. And then you want go model to model over and see all of its great um, monuments, Roman monuments, in this museum. It's a great way to start your Roman Lesson 101. They get out in the city of Arles and see the real thing, whether it's its great theater, its Roman arena that could handle 25,000 gladiator crazy fans 2,000 years ago, and enjoy its market days, two days a week, where you'll feature its fine olives, feature of the Provence cuisine and tapenade. Mar uh, the market days throughout the, the region of, of Provence are terrific, and Arles has two, of the, has two days of the greatest of them. Vincent van Gogh spent, dropped down, came down to the city of Arles when he was just 35 years old, hoping to jumpstart his career, his artistic career, and his social life. Coming from the flatlands and the gray skies of Holland, he was bowled over by everything Provencal, the wind, the sunshine, 350 days of the year. And he lived here for 18 months. Sadly, and this is the region when he lived here that influenced his art so greatly. And the paintings that we see that we love of Vincent van Gogh's were painted when he was at his time here. Productive artist he was, cranking out a masterpiece every two to three days during his time here. There are very few of his paintings, maybe one or two left that we can visit, depending on the year, in the city of Arles. But you can go on the footsteps, a tour of Vincent van Gogh, and stand where he did, you see. And look on the edge of the river, of the Rhone River, out over the city of Arles, and watch Starry Night over the Arles over the skylight and see what he saw. It looks just the same today. Twelve different panels are positioned in RO, taking you on the footsteps of Vincent van Gogh, showing paintings of what you're looking at that he painted in his style. I'd love that. Half an hour north of RO lies the walled city of Avignon behind its powerful walls. Um, lies a, lies a, a, an interesting history. Avignon is twice the size of RO with um, a, more of a sophisticated look. Um, and um, great vibe for its market squares. It's a young city, it's a student city, with very little to do in terms of sightseeing. This is the site in Avignon, and I actually think it's a rather mediocre one, though historically it's critically important. This is the Pope's palace in the, year, in the 1300s for almost 100 years. The Vatican was moved to southern France, and the entire city of Avignon was given a makeover. Nine popes ruled from here in the 1300s. You can tour the inside, of the Pope's palace in, in, um, in Avignon. It's largely vacant rooms with not a lot of things to see, but the history is interesting. That said, you can get a lot of the history by staring at it from the outside if you want to as well. Sur le pont d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. So you can walk on this famous medieval bridge if you want to. Once 3,000 feet long with 22 arches, there are only four arches left to cross. Avignon makes a brilliant base for those who don't have cars for sightseeing in the Provence area. Buses and trains get you out to see its most important sites, and those would be the Roman sites nearby. The Pont du Gard is just 45 minutes by bus, 30 minutes by your own car, probably from the city of Avignon. Here, the greatest Roman aqueduct that we get to see today in Europe, carried 9 million gallons of water a day across the 
this aqueduct along a 30-mile channel to serve the important Roman city of Nîmes, dropping one inch for every 350 feet as it went. It's a remarkable accomplishment that 2,000 years ago, this bridge was built, this aqueduct, before the invention of gunpowder, gunpowder, mortar. <laughs> I'm getting tired. That was good. Before the invention of mortar. So these stones are just positioned into place perfectly. Still today, floods happen on a regular basis in southern, southern France. Modern bridges wash away. Roman bridges lie intact. The, Nîmes, the, the city of Nîmes that the Pont de Garde served, it has one of the greatest Roman monuments, the Maison Carré, the best preserved interior, a brilliant Roman arena nearby about half an hour from uh, Avignon by train. Half an hour north, the city of Orange offers Roman sites here, the best preserved Roman theater of antiquity. Easy by train to visit, 10,000 people could attend a Roman play, opera, or musical here and experience rem um, remarkable sound effects, thunder, lightning. Go to visit the theater of Orange to appreciate what the Romans were capable of. For many people, the most important part of traveling in Provence is getting out um, onto the roadways like this and escaping the madding crowds and getting out to explore the gorgeous arid landscape dotted with olive trees, vineyards. We do a self-guided driving tour through the Côte de Rhone vineyards in the France book and the Provence book. Friendly, easygoing, tasting places like this and hill towns like this, like Les Beaux, powerful hill town of Les Beaux, or France's answer to Tuscany, the Luberon hill towns of Gordes, or my favorite, Roussillon all with cozy squares and lovely places to spend the night or at least some time before heading off onto the French Riviera. Just a few hours east of these hill towns that I just showed you in the city of Arles and Avignon lies the French Riviera, attracting cruise ships, sun worshipers, and travelers with a surprising array of sites for you to visit. The, the, uh, the city of Nice is the epicenter of this area with, its best, with France's second best and most easy to use airport. Lots of people fly into Nice and out of Paris or vice versa. It's half an hour for all that we cover, for all that's interesting on the French Riviera. It's half an hour from Nice to Antibes by train and about the same distance to Monaco at the eastern edge. Don't bring a car. If you're renting a car, rent it when you're ready to leave. If you have a car when you arrive, drop it off right away. Public transit in this area is brilliant, and the penalty for trying to drive in this compact area is high. Nice is the fifth largest city of France. It's a gorgeous city that's really cleaned up its act in the last five years, thanks largely to its tramway system, where all of the cars are taken off the roads that it goes near, including great squares. Until this tramway was built just a few years ago, the Place Massena here had cars racing right through it. Today. It looks like this, and at night it looks like this. How pedestrian friendly and how, what a change to the character of Nice this is. And for me as a guidebook writer, to see someplace change that well that I used to not look forward to going to is a joy. Stand up on Castle Hill and admire the fact that just below you, the old city of Nice is very Italian-esque when you wander through it. And we do a walking, a self-guided walking tour through the city of Nice, the old city that looks more, really, it looks like it could be in downtown Rome. Well, until the late 1800s, this was Italian. It was part of a principality owned by Italy. So the food, the architecture, feels very Italian-esque in Nice. Market days, the Course LA is the heartbeat of the center city of old Nice. The Promenade des Anglais is essential for understanding that the history of the city began really of importance about 100 years ago when Russian and British tourists starting, started to come here to escape their dreary winter weather. You can, we do a self-guided walking tour in our guidebook taking you along the Promenade des Anglais, uh, which looks like this today, by the way. Sunny weather, probably 65 degrees, something like that. Nobody's lying on the beach. Come in the summertime, it looks a little bit different, doesn't it? Who would do this? Lie on rocky beaches like this. The French don't care. It doesn't matter. They rent stage lounges and chairs and such to avoid the rocks commonly. But for you, anchor yourself in one of these lovely chairs and just let the scenery in front of you pass by and enjoy the Promenade des Anglais. Right? The Riviera is France's greatest corner for understanding contemporary art. There it drew artists, thanks to World War I, post-World War I, a variety of artists from Renoir to Marc Chagall, whose museum we're looking at, to um, Pablo Picasso and many others. And there's a museum dedicated to each of those artists along the Riviera, several of them in the city of Nice alone. Here, the greatest museum that you want to see is dedicated to Marc Chagall, who painted a series of 17 paintings just for this museum. 
inspired by the Bible, by uh, passages from the Bible. This is a brilliant museum, and we take you on a self-guided tour through it, thanks to the genius of Gene Openshaw, again, with the help of Rick Steves. I just get to update it when I go. The other museum nearby, just a couple of minutes away, is dedicated to uh, Henri Matisse, who lived just before Marc Chagall, died in the, in the early um, 1900s, and he painted in an abstract style. His museum, the museum dedicated to Henri Matisse, is less compelling to me, less essential for your visit, though if you're a Matisse fan, you must go visit, right? <sighs> dedicated the church, the Russian church in, in Nice is an interesting site to visit without question. Here, 500 families doled together their money to build this church, well, thanks to the Tsar, principally. The 500 families who lived in Nice year-round used this as a place of worship, and it's a fascinating, it's the greatest, probably the greatest um, Russian Orthodox church outside the country. Fascinating place to visit. Day trips from Nice are easy, thanks to buses and practical trains. You can go next door, 15 minutes away, to the lovely city of Villefranche-sur-Mer, where many people prefer establishing their home base because it's so quick to get into downtown Nice if you want, and then get away to this lovely little small village for their Riviera experience. Buses and trains connect it to downtown Nice on a regular basis in one direction. In the other, you can walk along beautiful seafront promenades across to the, to the uh, peninsula of Cap Ferrat, visit the remarkable Villa Euphrasie Rothschild with seven different gardens, gorgeous interior, but the gardens are what it's all about, looking to Mon Monaco on one direction and Villefranche the other, have dinner at one of my favorite restaurants, the Plage de Passable here, with views back onto Villefranche. It's about a 45 minute walk. Taxis will take you there in about 10 minutes. Having dinner, watching the lights of Villefranche come on, on the beach, is a marvelous experience to have. And what to eat in these Bouillabaisse, anything from the sea, you, is very expensive, Bouillabaisse is, but there are cheaper versions like Bouride, B-O-U-R-R-I-D-E. Anything shellfish from the Mediterranean makes logical sense to order in this region. And your sightseeing on the French Riviera. At the, if you see it once, that's enough, but you've got to go there. Principality of Monaco. This principality, just 30 minutes outside of Nice, another 20 maybe from Villefranche is where 30,000 Monegasquez live today, most because of the tax-free status, income tax-free status. You'll want to tour the rock, Monacoville. There are two principal parts of this small little principality. I think it's 30 kilometers. It's smaller than Edmonds. It's its own country, but it uses French currency in a lot. Visit the rock, the Monacoville, where Prince Rainier's palace, now Prince Albert's palace is, remember, married to Grace Kelly. Um, and arrive before noon every day for the changing of the guard, which is sort of silly to contemplate that a country this kind size has a changing of the guard and all of its pomp and circumstance, when you consider there are more people in the Philharmonic in Monaco than in the army. I like that. All right. Then cross the, uh, the port here where race cars have raced since 1929 up and down these hills doing 78 laps in the Monaco Grand Prix and find the, the neighborhood of Monaco called Monte Carlo. And here the casino is the main site, right? This is the, uh, if, they build, if you build it, they will come structure in Monaco built to, as an uh, economic investment plan where you can feel downright James Bond-like after two o'clock. Anybody can enter. It's free now to enter the gaming rooms, but you have to dress up and look as nice as you possibly can. Shorts are not allowed, tennis shoes and this kind of thing. Bring, wear the best thing that you brought with you and spend your last night maybe on your French experience in this glimmering city of Monaco. It's glorious at night, easy to get back to, the, to your home base in Nice or Villefranche sur Mer. Well, this southeastern corner of France is covered perfectly well in our France book, but even better in our book that dedicates itself to Provence and the Riviera. All the information is updated on our website, information about our tours. Things change, so we update our books on our website. Check our website out before you go. Maybe the price or maybe it's of, the, of a great monument has changed or it's closed. You'll find that information on our website. And I know that if you go to France, no matter what region you choose to go to, if you paddle on your own, choosing to do it on your own, or with a group, you'll have a marvelous experience because of those waiters, not in spite of them. Merci, everybody. Thank you for your attention on this rainy night. If you've enjoyed this video, you'll find lots more at ricksteves.com and on my Rick Steves YouTube channel. Happy travels, and thanks for joining us.